Have you asked him why he broke up with you? You can ask yeah, people know. what they're thinking. This is a kind of a key element of life. <laughs> Something crazy that you did not know. Life, little you, life hack for you. Ask people hack what you. they're thinking. You just give him a call and be like, hey, this is really bothering me. Why did you break up with me? And then Why he's like, oh, it's because I broke my foot, <laughs> you know, or something. Who knows? I'm just but really busy at work right now. I'm just really busy at work right now. <laughs> I got a lot of problems. I ran out of toilet paper. <laughs> you know, it could be anything. <laughs> I ran out of toilet paper. So if you really want to know, I would ask him. Otherwise, you're just going to be sitting there contemplating it forever and it's going to frustrate you and bother you. So if it's really going to upset you, just call him. And if you think you can get over it without calling him, then just move on. It's fine. I know it hurts. I'm sorry. It's fine. I, I, I... All right. You came to the right place, you ding dong. It's called communication, baby. <laughs> Welcome to The Crunch, the only podcast hosted by Red from Shawshank Redemption. Andy Dufresne was a good friend of mine in the prison yard. And when those ladies sang, when he played the opera music, oh, we all stood there and we watched the ladies sing. But I think that Andy Dufresne really did kill his wife. And I'm... <laughs> And I chose to be friends with him in Mexico anyway. <laughs> Andy Dufresne. <laughs> yep. And I'm Patrick. <laughs> You're probably wondering how I ended up in here. <laughs> yep, that's me. It's it's as easy as I'm Morgan Freeman. Uh, I'm the, I, you could say that I know how to procure things. Shawshank you need a rock hammer. Is. You need a picture of a lady. <laughs> mm. I'll are you, get um, that for you. Are, oh, are you ready to start Jim Carrey wants to be God now. Oh, <laughs> Steve Carell. That's a different movie. That's a different movie. <laughs> mm, I'm going to run a syndicate of assassins. Mm. That's the same movie. Uh, God in that movie runs a syndicate of assassins. <laughs> Well, is Morgan Freeman. Isn't it, isn't it crazy that Morgan Freeman and Whoopi Goldberg have both played God? It's great. We should start calling her Whoop. <laughs> I'm sure what? people call her Whoop, but it's like Whoop Gold. <laughs> Whoop W G. W G. Whoopi Goldberg. She's not Jewish. W G B. I um. Anyway. Welcome this is a podcast where we give dating, dating advice. I'm sorry, this I did is a my podcast about dating advice, not a podcast. I was looking at starring. I was looking at all these pictures of Morgan Freeman, Morgan Freeman movie quotes dot com, and uh, really? here here's one. You measure yourself by the people. I'm in the the bucket list with Robert De Niro. All right, let's start the podcast. All right, we give dating right, advice man. to young hot singles in your area. Click here now. If you want to get some dating advice, go to bit.ly slash crunch discord, pop a question in yeah. the dating corner and we will answer it. And I have a sad question from Claire. Are you ready for the sad question? Mm, yes. Give your problems to Steve. This can't, board. It, your Morgan Freeman <laughs> has some Yoda elements. It has a it. little, it's like Yoda, Morgan Freeman, <laughs> and Hannibal Lecter had like a triple baby. Yeah. A triple baby. They got, they, <laughs> Never mind. I can't repeat the I can't repeat the cut. I can't repeat the cut clip from you, last time. You cannot. Please, Buffalo Bill. Please cut that. I need Buffalo that Bill cut. is the one that you seek, the murderer. I'm going right. to nibble a man's ear off. Favanti. All right, can we go? I'm ready. <laughs> we, I'm waste. <laughs> From Claire, I have a friendship question. Yeah. If that's okay to put in here. Sure. People talk about their We we have a friendship friends. question right now, you and me. <laughs> it's just a tough it's a tough <laughs> evening. I have a handful of friends from a high school who will not let our friendship die. Oh, oh man. I've seen them a couple of times brutal. a year during my time home from college, but I just graduated. I'm worried they'll reach out again. They're not Catholic or even remotely Christian. They talk about things that make me uncomfortable. Not malicious, and I don't think they want me to feel awkward, but 
they're just immersed in TV, video games, and fandom junk, and I've run away from all of that since high school. The worst of it was last year, New Year's Eve, when we all gave PowerPoint presentations for fun. That is fun. But all, and all but one of the topics talked about were um, anime boys, fandom moments, how gay each Stardew Valley character is in detail. <laughs> Okay, that's kind of funny. I like that like, one. Like <laughs> speculation on sexual acts done by oh, each character. I think it's funny just like pick a character just like based on vibes. Like he's a 6 out of 10. Like that's he's funny. 6 out of 10. But, but, to do, but to go that in depth is a little a little weird. I find I felt kind of sick afterward, but they genuinely wanted to see me. I don't understand why. It breaks my heart. They think they, they that it breaks my heart to think this might be the best friendships they have. I know that they know my <clears> beliefs. <throat> But more awkwardness comes in because I have one friend from childhood who I still see regularly and I want to continue my friendship with. She's friends with them. Patrick talked about friendships fizzling out on the podcast today, and I'm convinced that it's impossible. Or maybe it just happens to men more than women. I know every that might be true. That the men love true. men love to fizzle. There's Dude, nothing men, a guy I, loves more than like just never seeing another guy again. You know, it's no, it's I saw a meme that it kind of captures it. It was a girl who was like, you got engaged two days ago and you didn't tell me our friendship is over. And it was like two guys like, hey, bro, I haven't seen you in 10 years. I totally forgot to tell you I got married. I haven't yeah. seen you in three days. I totally forgot to tell you I got married. <laughs> but it's Congrats, like I got dude. married five years. Like I've been married for three years and I've known you for a yeah. year. Like and they just won't know that about each other. Yeah. Um that, that is say, it's yeah. the same, two sides of the same coin. I could know you for 10 years and you didn't know that I got married a year ago or you've known me for one year and I didn't tell you I got married 10 years ago. <laughs> it's true. That's funny. Uh, that's yeah. It might just be a guy thing. I don't know. Um, I know every person is different. What do I do? Honestly, I think the problem is I can't stand the idea of someone thinking I don't like them. All right. Let's talk about that. Cause that seems to be the problem. Yeah. Is that the whole question? Yeah. That's the whole question. What yeah. Do I, do? I think you don't have to be friends with anyone you don't want to be friends with. All friendship is, is really at the end of the day, like who you're spending time with. And if you're like not enjoying the time that's being spent with people, regardless of what the label is, because I think we get all tied up at like, oh, this is my best friend because I spend the most time with them. Or these are my good friends because I, we all spend time together in a group and this, yeah. you know, but it's like, who do you want to spend time with? How do you want to spend your time? You only get $24 a day, as they say. Mm-hmm. And how are you going to spend them? So if you're like, you don't want to, spend time with people you don't have to and you don't even have to provide a reason you can even tell your friend like hey i want to keep being your friend but this group of people makes me uncomfortable and i don't and i don't want to go to those hangouts anymore when i was in college and my high school friend group wouldn't go away i just left the group chat i just and it was group me back then so you could just see ethan left the group chat and they stopped inviting me to things (laughs) so it worked. There you go. But I did I did have to reconnect with a guy years later and he was like, "Dude, why did you do that?" And I was like, "You guys were talking about sex and drugs in the GC." And I wasn't into that. Like I didn't want to live that way. He's like, "Oh, yeah. I thought it's cuz you thought that you were better than us." And I was like, "No. It's just like you guys were doing stuff I didn't want to do." Yeah, I wanted to be better than you. <laughs> it's like and it worked. Um, no. So I so I, you could leave the GC. That's an easy one. That's a pretty clear signal. You could block everyone's number, which I don't recommend, but you could do. Or you could just have a conversation or just keep turning them down until they stop inviting you. Yeah, I am I am actually a super big fan of not friend breaking up with people. That is true. I, it's a little I'm weird. A it makes sense for I'm the one proponent. friend. Like say, I like being friends with you. I just don't feel comfortable in this group. Please don't invite me to these things, but I still like you. Yes, that's, that's, that's an important conversation to have because it's like, hey, just letting you know. <laughs> This is important. I don't know. But don't tell them. Like, please don't tell them. I don't want it yeah. to be weird. You yeah. know, like, don't friend break up with people. I've had friends friend break up with me. Phoebe had a friend friend break up with her. It's just weird. It is um, weird. It's like, you're not, it's, it, it's always over text. And it's like, that's not how friendship works. It comes and goes and we move and it's fine. But it's, I don't recommend friend break up. But yeah, have a conversation with the one friend. I think you'll be fine. All right. Yeah, this is good. This is normal. You're normal. And people like you and it's not, and nobody cares what the, everyone says about you. We're all talking about it right now though. Wise wizards of dating <coughs> advice. How problematic is it? If the girl I've been going out with is a pothead, is she willing to quit? Says Ethan too. 
She'd stop when pregnant. She said she would only take edibles if she had kids. <laughs> to be honest, I'm about 50-50 on whether this is a sin. She's not Catholic. She's Protestant who occasionally reads her Bible, doesn't attend Sunday service, says she wants to get married. She wants to be religious and raise her kids. The smell of weed appalls me. If she was only taking edibles, I probably wouldn't mind as much. I would just still feel uncomfortable. I don't know. Like, do you like weed? Only date her if you like weed. Yeah, only date if you're a pothead. This is easy. Problem solved. I think it's strange to be like, I'm not going to smoke weed when I'm pregnant. I'm going to have edibles when I have kids who depend on my on me. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like you know, a, you know, it's like a weird thing to say. Like, I'm not going to do drugs how, again until I have children living in my house that need me <laughs> for stuff. The only two substances you should be doing are alcohol and cigarettes. And here's why. The people who are addicted to alcohol and cigarettes, they tell you don't do it. They're like, yeah, man, don't don't smoke. It's awful. You know, like, uh, mm-hmm. dude, like, you know, d- yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm an alcoholic. You should, you should probably avoid that stuff. People who do weed, they want you. They want you to smoke weed with them. They need they, someone they, to be miserable they with. They need you. They yeah. need you to do it. The cigarette they is only... enough company on its own to yes. stand alone. But you can't smoke weed alone and be happy, right? You can smoke alone nope. and be happy, like a cigarette. And yeah. I think that means a lot, you know. Yeah. So you gotta. If you, <coughs> you you should not date this woman unless you are prepared to lie to a doctor and tell them you're anxious and need weed. Yeah, I sound like I've been smoking weed and also cigarettes. I just was sick last week, and I'm having to talk mm. for like two hours straight. Mm. And we got the AC on, so we got the air very dry. I promise I'm fine. I would not date someone who smoked weed. That just would not be something that I yeah. would do. It's not a good call. The smell of weed is awful. It's the uh, worst yo, thing dude. ever. It smells like a skunk. I don't um, like how weed smells. I don't like. I, I don't like how it's my wife, everywhere now. My wife came to me one day and she was like, I'm going to take an edible today while I'm parenting. <laughs> I would just, it's just such a bizarre, I'd be like, no, I'll stay home. Yeah. I'll quit. You go work. Do you do, do edibles at work and I'll stay at home <laughs> and I'll be sober. Yeah, I'm here. sure you can. I'm sure you can get edibles done while at work. Oh my gosh. All right. A lot of people this, do it. Yeah. I, I was off the Discord for a minute, and I like kind of just kind of briefly saw that KR is back. Um, she on is. The Discord. She was she's texting me today. <laughs> she texted me. She's like, "I want to, I want to come on the pod." And I was like, "Yeah, you know, you can come on the pod sometime." And then I stopped responding because I'm a married man and I don't text women. And because um, she sent me an emoji, I was like, "I'm not going to respond to a woman who's just sending me an emoji. That's emoji. not my wife." I don't respond you know? emojis now. I and only then she texted me again. Two people, my wife and my dad. And she emojis. sent me another text today and it said, yo, bro, if you're serious about having me on the podcast, I have a podcast mic just to let you know. <laughs> just, <laughs> bro, she just wants to be on the podcast. You. She wants to be on the pod. She wants to do a dating episode with us to talk about discernment and relationships yes, and such. I think that would be a good idea. But I think I think it would be good. And she could tell us about her new beau. You know? Yeah, her new, her new fella. Uh, yeah. Urgent question, a quick turn of events. I downloaded a dating app. Follow-up question, what do you do if you start sending memes to each other and you're sending wholesome dog memes and he's sending distasteful memes? How do you be like, nope? Dude, and these memes are distasteful, bro. These memes are... <laughs> distasteful memes. These memes, are, these memes are straight to distasteful, brother. I remember, I remember when all the meme pages were like blank memes for blank teens. Yeah. That was, that was a good, that was a good, that was a good couple of years. Yeah. <clears throat> um what's the question she's sending it, so she's trying to not get distasteful memes she's getting some absolutely d- uh devious licks in the some in the, in yeah the... some some diabolical tomfoolery <laughs> is happening in the chat yeah she's good she's 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 sending like this heck and pupper gets 10 11 out of 10 yeah. paws up and he's like he sent her the mario meme <laughs> The Mario meme is not uh, bad. It's a great. Hold on, I'm gonna drink this. Real quick. I would. I think if you're hanging out with nuns for a year and then you get that meme, you're like a little freaked out. In my whoa. Yeah. That was impressive. Oh, that feels so much better. 
Wow. Someone said, I saw someone was like, you got to drink a gallon of water a day. And someone was like, the only correct way to drink water is drink one glass in 0.52 seconds and then fill it up immediately after and sip on that one for the rest of the night. And I was like, that is how I drink that water. That is 100% correct. I just got out of a cold shower and boy, are my arms tired. I just got out of prison. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I need something to get my spiritual life back on track. Speaking of prison, uh, thanks, thank you to Exodus 90 for sponsoring this episode <laughs> of our podcast. Um, if you've done Exodus 90, you might have felt like you were in a prison of not being able to, to, to watch television. But Exodus 90 is more than sacrifices and cold showers and asceticism. Yes. Exodus 90 has an app of reflection and, and prayer for you to use throughout the year. Yes. That you might not be aware of. It's at exodus90.com slash the crunch. Say yes. that first, but then you can talk. <laughs> no, exodus90.com slash the crunch is the place to go. Instead of being, you know, in jail, not having snacks because I didn't have enough money in my commissary, I am now not eating snacks because of Exodus 90. Exodus90.com slash the crunch is the place to be. And this month, they're doing a special course in anticipation of the Na- National Eucharistic Congress, special course on the Eucharist that you can get. You go to exodus90.com slash the crunch. You get 14 day free trial. And you can go deeper as we as a nation prepare for the National Eucharistic Congress. It's a big ticket item, but Exodus 90 has got some really, really great stuff on there about the Eucharist that you're going to want to see. Exodus90.com slash the crunch for the 14-day trial. Patrick, you've been liking what they've been doing. I, I've been liking what they've putting out. I, I knew about this app a while ago before they sponsored the podcast. I used it when I did Exodus 90, and I can highly recommend it. So Exodus90.com slash the crunch, 14-day free trial. Thank you, Exodus 90, for sponsoring this episode of The Crunch. Do it now, or else my prison sentence was in vain. Patrick, you're always talking about how you're reading books. I'm protesting. I'm not I'm not reading books anymore. You're not reading books anymore? No, you need to convince me to read a book. I don't want to read books anymore. I need, I'm tired a, I need to I convince watch. my friends to read a book? I want to, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't want to read books anymore. I want to watch television. Uh, and I'm going to use pathos here and appeal to your mm-hmm. emotions because you're my friend. Yes. Today, mm-hmm. I started reading Alec Molly's Out of Sons a wonderful fictional tale about two brothers that go on a journey to rekindle some love, maybe have an adventure, maybe Mm. find out what brotherhood is actually about. I was reading it first of all, because they, the author is a friend of mine. He sponsors show. But then as I got about 20 pages into it, I was like, hold on a minute. My guy, who's a friend of mine from college actually wrote a pretty compelling book dang (laughs) i know i was like shoot this is good he gets a lot of stuff right about what it's like to be a guy about Mm -hmm. what it's like to be growing up in a world where your a desk job feels like the only choice or if you're not doing that then you're basically working as a lawn care person for the rest of your life like these two young men that are just wrestling with like how do i live my life how do i not let down my dad how do i be a good person Whenever it's so easy to not be a good person. I really think you'd like the book and I think you should read it. Well, I'm convinced. I know I'm doing like a bit, but every time you talk about, for some reason, Alec, the, the book is not getting to my house. Please send, <laughs> you're torturing me. I'm hearing, I'm hearing about this book and I'm like, honestly, I'm just going to go buy it. That's actually, yeah. I've, I've decided I'm just going to buy it you because should. Uh, first of all, it's, it's, I'm telling everyone else to do it. So I should probably do it myself. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm going to go buy this book. You should all do it too. Uh, Out of Sons by Alec Molly. It is out on Amazon now. Go check it out. That's I I read half of the book in one sitting today. Wow, so is that good? I, it's it. I'm I'm not joking. So everybody, wow. get the book, read it. Out of Sons by Alec Molly. Get it on Amazon. Link is in the bio. Um, I think you just have to keep overwhelming him with like heck and cute puppo, you know memes. Yeah. Um, this is what my wife does. I never send my wife anything distasteful, because over time. I've shown her things that I think like I'll laugh at something and she's like, what are you laughing at? And I'll show her this, like like a meme of Peter Griffin dancing to like something inappropriate. And then it's just, you know, it's like loud and obnoxious. I'm like, look at this this is funny. It's making me laugh. It's Peter Griffin. And she's like, here's a picture. Here's a video of a baby eating a snack. (laughs) And I'm like, all right, (laughs) we're just on different. We're on different timelines here. So I'm going to not show you any more of these and I'm just going to watch yours and we'll share yours and I'll keep mine over here. And it just happened over time. Like at the beginning, I was like, you've got to like these because these are funny. 
And then I realized are, she doesn't need I, to. I, I, I'm connected to these on a personal level. These I'm are connected nice to these on a personal TV. level. My wife will never see Dracula Flow 5. Ever. I'm she sure. will not know it exists. Because she doesn't need to see it. You know? It's not for her. It is for me. And that's okay. Um, so the answer is, over time, as he gets to know you better, he'll probably learn what to send you. And it will probably be things that ride the line but aren't. You know, that's nothing, the joy nothing, of having a, a wife takes, that's sensitive, you know? Nothing takes the wind out of a guy's sails by you just being like, I don't get it. Oh. Just respond that you don't get it. Yeah, that's true. And then he has to explain it or just be like, ah, never mind. And he'll just move it's, on. It's funny because Mario had a big dumper in this game, but he doesn't have a big dumper in the other Look game. Look at what they took from us. Look and then what they the took girl from, from Ratatouille is like, <laughs> gonna gonna smack his big dumper. Yeah, because Mario's got funny. a big butt in one of the games, yeah. and it's funny. I do like I do like that the uh, Oops Wrong Discord has become kind of like a, a meme in the Speakeasy group chat. If you want to know, we what have we're our, talking we have about, a patreoncom slash the front. We have a Speakeasy chat for our patrons on Discord. If you like what we do, let's do another question. I'm I'm running low on fumes, so we need to we need to speed up the show. And look up, look at the Speakeasy, and look at the <coughs> memes. Look at the right memes now? in the speakeasy. It, I, I, it's the one that's like Riley's. Like I got a new emotion, and it's just hi. I'm racism. <laughs> that one's pretty funny. <laughs> that was my favorite. Um, what about? Uh... <laughs> did you like the one that I? Did you like the one that I posted with Black Dave Ramsey? All right, we're gonna move on. <laughs> yeah, I did see Black Dave Ramsey. <laughs> Black Dave Ramsey. Oh man. Anyway, let's do another question. All right, back to the topics. Uh, all right. Yep. So, my I've hit my second wind. From curious tortoise shell, can someone please decode the mind of a twenty-three-year-old male? No. I, a twenty-eight-year-old female, attended a diocesan singles event a few months ago. Over the course of a few weeks, I met a young man who had the three C's. What do you think they are? I know uh, what they are. Catholic. Yep, easy. Catechize. No. No. Is that not on. it? Oh, Catholic not caffeinated. It. No. Catholic uh, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Coptic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a Coptic Catholic Christian. No, it's probably no, it's uh, probably cute, something else. Cute oh, caring, and conversational. Oh, exactly. so he's so that, he's boring. That's all they want. That, uh, Even better, he likes me too. Hmm. He seemed to. We hung out in a group setting a few times. He asked me out on a date. I was nervous about the age gap. They're five years apart. But I decided telling him no to subsequent dates would make the decision out of fear. Uh, uh, no, whatever. She went with him. So when he asked me to be his girlfriend on our third date, I said yes. After all, I liked his personality. We seemed to have several common values. After a week, we DTR'd. I went out of town. While I was gone, we chatted over the phone. All seemed well. I got back. He came to a joint birthday party with my roommate and I. He met my friends and family. Then four days later, he broke up with me. What was no. he thinking? Why did he come to the party and meet everyone? Was that too much too soon? I know the timeline was hard, but why does a guy ask a girl to go steady and then break up two weeks later? Do you know? No. I mean, I've never been in a relationship that... How old is this girl? For like, uh, it's she's a five-year age gap. She's 28 yeah. and he's 23. He probably got freaked out. He probably was like, ah, I'm in a relationship with a 28-year-old. <laughs> That's not that. Yeah, it's a pretty big age gap, actually. <clears throat> it is. I mean, I don't know. When I was 23, I think I went on a date with a 27-year-old. And even then, I was like, we're kind of different places. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're like a new adult and they're like an old adult. Yeah. And they're, yeah. It's like, I'm just imagining <coughs> dating a 23-year-old now. Granted, my life is very different now than if I was single and 28. But it's just, I don't know. Maybe he just got freaked out by that. Maybe he, he I, don't, I don't think there's anything deeper to it. It's probably just... He decided that he wanted to do something else. You know, it probably had nothing to do with you. It was probably like, I don't know if this is the thing that I want to be doing right now at this moment. 
or better or for worse, know. it is more acceptable for a 28 year old man to date a 23 year old woman. Yeah, that's fair. From my perspective. Mm -hmm. I don't think you did anything wrong and I don't think the relationship was wrong. I just think that maybe, yeah, I, I can't, I you I have I don't know what this guy was thinking. We've only seen your side of the story, and we we don't really had know much about because he didn't say have him right in. <clears throat> yeah, have you asked him why he broke up with you? You can ask yeah, people what they're thinking. This is a kind of a key element of life. <laughs> Something crazy that you did not know. Life little you, life hack for you. Ask people what you. they're thinking. You should give him a call. Be like, hey, this is really bothering me. Why did you break up with me? And then why he's did you like. Break up with me? Oh, it's because I broke my foot, <laughs> you know, or something. Who knows? I'm just but really busy at work right now. I'm just really busy at work right now. I got a lot of problems. I ran out of toilet paper. <laughs> you know, it could be <laughs> I ran anything. Out of toilet paper. So if you really want to know, I would ask him. Otherwise, you're just going to be sitting there contemplating it forever, and it's going to frustrate you and bother you. So if it's really going to upset you, just call him. And if you think you can get over it without calling him, then just move on. It's fine. Short relationships happen. I wouldn't. I wouldn't read into it too much. It was just kind of maybe a wrong place, wrong time kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Sorry that happened to you. That does stink. That's, good. That's no fun, especially the party, like introducing him and everybody, and then being like, "Oh, he broke up with me." He broke up with me. It's weird. He's gone it's, now. It's, the suddenness <laughs> of it makes me think that it's not you. It was probably something else. Yeah. You know? Unless you're leaving something out. Right, unless you're leaving something out and you and you got and you got full body plastic surgery in between when the the party and like the next time he saw you. I got a Brazilian butt lift on my face and I'm you know, we're still dating now, right? So they, they dated for they were on <laughs> got a Brazilian cheek lift. <laughs> but up nice. here, they I didn't specify which cheek. <gasps> the um so they, they went on three dates, they knew each other for about a month, they went at, he asked her to be his girlfriend. They DTR'd. Oh, a week after mm -hmm. that, he she went out of town, chatted on the phone. All was well. I went back, came to a party. Oh, so they like they broke up like two weeks. Yeah, they broke up like two weeks later. It sounds like he may have just rushed into things and was like yeah. having buyer's remorse. Yeah. Sorry to say it like that, but like that's. He, he you are a been, product like... that he purchased that he <laughs> wanted to take back to the store. And Patrick Nevy said that. The the race car driver. <laughs> the, <laughs> the race car driver. The bodybuilder. The race car driver is dead. Bodybuilder is still alive. We're friends on Facebook. You Imagine if you became a bodybuilder and a race car driver. Dude, that's what I should do. Holy it cow. It is what you should like, do. Now I'm, and what if I became Belgian? It was so funny because like I used... I. Patrick Nevy is a bodybuilder. <laughs> Pat Nevy is a bodybuilder. Mr. Universe, um, 1970 something. And I knew about this guy and I used him as a joke all the time. I, when I did, when I did stand up comedy, I used to have people Google me and I'd be like, that's what I used to look like. <laughs> that's funny. Um, but it was like, I, I used it as a joke all the time. And then all of a sudden, halfway through college, I get a DM on Facebook from Pat Nevy, the bodybuilder who was just going through Pat Nevy's on Facebook nice. and DMing them. And he was nice. like, "Hey, we have the same name." I'm like, "Dude, I know who you are. What are you tell? Why are you That's doing this? So funny. You're the most. Yeah. I've googled all of us. You're the most famous one." It's it's literally the meme of like this super jacked guy typing on the computer, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like I've looked up all the Pat Nevies. There's the race car driver. There's the mark, the internet marketer who has PatrickNevy.com, by the way, or at least did, and then the Chinese took it, and now it's a not a good site. Don't go to that. Ew. Go to patnevy.com. And then there's me. And I'm slowly overtaking the bodybuilder because I am younger and sexier. I think it'd be funny if you just had to do whatever job your your namesakes did, like in days of yore. You know what I mean? I my name doesn't have a my last name doesn't have a namesake. My last name is only like a couple generations old. Kid named Adolf. <laughs> Freaks out. It's like no. Bro. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna follow my name six footsteps. I think there's no Ethan Stevies. I think I'm the only one ever, actually. I don't think that's true. So I don't think that Ethan is a name. Nobody was named Ethan until me, first of all. And second <laughs> of all, the Stevie line in Lower Saxony. Mm -hmm. I don't think there were many Ethans rocking around over there. So I know another Stevie. <coughs> yeah, I know I know several. What is this? A competition? 
<laughs> no, I mean like another non-related to you. I'm in, a, I'm in a house with two of them right now. Friggin. <laughs> let me go. Let me go. Let me go get them. Step em. up. Let me, let me go. go let me go list out my Stevies that I've got. <laughs> I got. I got a lot of Stevies. I got Stevies. If I go to S on my phone, bro, you'll <laughs> bro, see something. You're not gonna. You're gonna. It. Are your, you're gonna are your see contacts something. sorted by last name? Yeah, I'm not a crazy person. Dude, that's weird. It's weird to have them sorted by last name. Hi, everyone. I need assistance. A secular guy has slid into my DMs. He's a friend of a friend. That's absolutely wild. There's two <laughs> Caitlin Stevies. Yeah, it's the same number twice. Nice. Sheesh. That's what happens when you import your contacts from your flip phone. It a does. secular guy has slid yep. into my DMs. He's a friend of a friend. I'm not sure how I feel about this, but it's clear he is eager to chat. How does one navigate this as a Catholic? Go on a date with him. Next question. No, I was like, I actually went the opposite way. I was like, yeah, just don't talk to him. Oh, does she not like him? Does she not think he's cute? She said, a secular guy has slid into my DMs, friend of a friend. I'm not sure how I feel about it. It's clear he wants to chat with me. How do I navigate this? Just don't talk to him. Yeah, dude, if you don't want to or, talk to him, and don't if talk you're to like, him. And if you're like, oh, man, I did want to talk, then talk to him. I'm not your dad. Yeah. <laughs> a, it's so funny to call someone a secular guy. Secular guy. Yeah. It's like material girl. In a secular yeah. Guy world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I am a secular girl. <laughs> it's, it's literally it's oh, material girl and secular guy. Both. I'm they, a secular they, they girl. It's, yeah. Um, I don't know. What do you want to do? Like you're my it's Gen like you're X, asking my us. My Gen X what, coworkers. Yeah. Sorry, on on the material girl thing. My sure. Gen X coworkers who grew up with Madonna. <clears throat> were like so confused when their Gen Z daughter was like, I'm a material girl. And my, my coworker Dean was like, how do you know that song? <laughs> like, what, what are you listening to Madonna for? And they're like, it's insane. Like, it's insane that Gen X people are like, how do you know that song when their generation of music is the only freaking thing that's been played on repeat for the last 45 years? No 70s music doesn't get played on repeat. 90s mm -hmm. music doesn't get played on. It's just 80s music. All the time. Well, I forever. mean, but like, but like Gen Z doesn't listen to the radio, you know? Yes, but you hear it through things. You watch movies. That's you go fair. to you go to park. You hear it on radio from mm -hmm. local man. Mm -hmm. It was also a it. psyop because Barbie was coming out. Barbo. And so they were doing Barbo. <laughs> Tony Spork. <laughs> Tony Spork and Barbo and New Mattel <laughs> Barbo Adventure. Lamenheimer. <laughs> Hey, what about? Never mind. Atomic bomb and <laughs> I got I got mixed in my own mind just then. Like I was gonna say, <laughs> we gotta end the podcast. All right, I'm losing. I'm Thank losing. I feel. I can feel my Exodus brain leaking 90. out of my ears. <laughs> Thank you to Exodus ninety uh, for sponsoring this episode of the Crunch <laughs> Podcast. Check out Exodus ninety forward slash the Crunch. And you'll get, um, I think you get a free trial of, uh, you'll get a week free of Exodus 90 yep. and it'll be, and, and it'll be good for you. And then, um, also thank you to out of sons. Um, yes. Author name. One By Alec Molly, Alec Molly, Alec Molly for, Alec go Molly check it out. Last name, Alec Molly yes. out of sons. Great book. It's actually really Great good. Book. You'll hear about it. If you didn't hear it in the ad, I talk about it in the ad and it's, I, I really am loving the book. I think it's awesome. I think everyone should go and read it. Um, yes. Get it if you have a guy in your life. Get that book. We'll talk yes. about it. Yeah. Yes, 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 we'll talk yes. about it later. Yeah. Talk about it more. And that is all. Unless we have another sponsor, um, have nope. they, they haven't sent us it. in the last couple nope. minutes. They haven't sent us nope. the paperwork. All right, we're nope. good. Nope. Nope. Um, guys, we're like a real podcast now. Patrick, do you have anything else for the people? I'm in the club listening to the brown note. Thank you all for listening. Please pray for us. We'll be praying for you. We'll see you all next time.